I'm here with Tony Bielas of Daystate. Tony, good to see you. Hi Giles. How are you doing? Long time no see. Uh, yeah, a few days actually, isn't it? <laughs> believe right, it or yes. not. It was yeah. amazing, long time for us. Yes, um, Tony, your stand looks fantastic. Here Thank you. Game Fair. And I know you've got three crackers out on display there. We've got the Regal, and we've got the B&E uh, um, Regal, and we've got the Wolverine. Tell us a little bit more That's about right. those. right, three new rifles for Daystate mm -hmm. for this year. Uh, the Regal, which is, uh, as you know, launched a couple of months back now. Yes. And uh, it's been selling like hotcakes, absolutely <laughs> well received. People love it. So I, very happy to show that here for the first time. It is outstanding as a rifle. Mm -hmm. I get so many questions about it, and literally everyone says to me, is it as good as that? And I'm like, yes, it is. So fantastic. Good to hear. Right. Uh, but we've uh, great friends down at Boxall and Edmondson. We've known Peter Boxall for many years. Yes. And we were able to time with him about a year ago to do this limited edition. It's taken us mm -hmm. about a year to get yeah. it into production, which is about normal for a, a yes. limited edition rifle. And we have the B&E uh, based uh, rifle, but based on the Regal. Yes. So already we have a limited edition Regal. BD did the breech block engraving for us yes. in their laser work. Yeah. And it's got a special stock with the B and E logo running through it. Mm -hmm. And this is going into the shops uh, from the end of September. Yeah. Uh, they're already pr uh, sold out to the shops, mm -hmm. but if you want one, you can go into the shop and get it yeah. from there. But if the shops have already got it on, on order. We, we saw that, I know, a couple of weeks ago, and yeah. the reaction to that is just. Ooh la la yeah, that's right. thing, isn't it? Well, that's, that's what we're after. Yeah. We're not making a gun for everybody. Um, no. It's not intended. It has got the new uh, MTC uh, ultralight scope on it. And right. The only place you can get one at the moment is on attached to the top of uh, uh, Boxall and Edmondson. Okay. And that's the, the latest scope from uh, MTC. Yeah. And say so in, the, in the shops at the end of September. Yeah. And of course, it's got a Belita silencer from Andrew Huggett on yes. it as well. Again, uh, a state-of-the-art silencer on this rifle. Yeah. Yeah, and based on the Regal, so not only are you getting something that you can maybe hang on your wall that looks very good, but as a rifle, it's a, it's a fantastic It'll package. shoot well, and I think yeah. it should be used. I don't think it's, yes. it's, a, okay, it's a collector's rifle, yeah. but it's, it would be a shame mm -hmm. if they weren't used because they really yeah. will shoot well. People shoot yeah. Purdy's, you can shoot one of these. That's it. Okay. Okay. Right, and then finally on to the star, really, which is the Wolverine. Um, mm -hmm. As you know, we did, uh, over a year ago, we did the Wolverine 303 at yes. Stokes Castle. Seems a long time ago now, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, yeah. I seem to remember... That was my wedding anniversary weekend. I got into a lot of trouble for that. That explains a lot. That yes. explains a lot, yeah, yes. so there you go. Okay. Um, but we have the Wolverine 12 foot pound now, mm -hmm. uh, which of course will go all the way up to 40 foot pound in 2.2 wow. for the export and the FAC market in the UK. Okay. Um, it has all the features of the 303, but we slimmed everything down. Yep. We've made it smaller, we've made it lighter, 7.4 pounds, all up weight. Okay. Um, we've moved the center of gravity back further. Yeah. Uh, it, it was styled to look like a day state. So in a way, so we've had a couple of people say, oh, it looks like an Air Ranger. Well, that's good because that's where we were, that's what we were yes. looking for. But it's all new, everything's different, and it's got all the features. On the side, you've got a standard pressure gauge. So it's not digital inside, it's No, that's right, it's all inside. fully mechanical. It's okay. all the slingshot hammer system, the micro valve with the titanium uh, valve striker in there. Yep. And uh, it's got one or two other features, such as the patented indexing pin and yes. the bolt open safety. Okay. Uh, but it's a mechanical rifle. Right. Okay, so early November, and, and people can go out and get themselves one of those. That's right. Fantastic. Well, yeah, let's get on the range. Let's go do and, it. And see, let's see what we, we can find on. when see, we get there. There might be someone on there special having a go. Let's see. Completely different block. This is not the two pieces, this is one piece. Uh -huh. So you've got, two part, you've got two parts here, this is just a one piece in here. Um, different housing arrangements. Oh yeah, you got to, you had to cut out your cut out here, this is screw the shroud. On attachment, different diameter shroud. Oh, so no more Allen key? This no, is screw on now? screw on there, oh, okay. yeah. Um, different baffle arrangement in the front. This is, this is there, larger diameter here, yeah, this is, is it? 23 as opposed to 20, 23 to 22 millimeter. Sorry, it's uh, millimeters. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> um, a higher breech block as well, seven millimeter a higher breech block than on the oh so yeah that allows us to go see this one's got 30 mil yeah. medium mounts yeah so whereas with the suits better a one inch um mount because it's it's a little bit low for 30 mil yeah is the thread the same on the end same start adapter on the end obviously just bad but if you want to look at parts which are the same yeah you're looking at this cap which i think is the same length Yep, uh -huh. so the cap's the same, that fill is the same, but the body's shorter on the, the Wolverine. Oh yeah, yep. so it is. Um, so that part and that part are the same. The bottle's the same, but everything else, everything else is different. Shaft bolt, handle, 
trigger, mind body assembly, valve, everything's so did, different. Did this require you to cut the stock differently? Yeah, the stock's completely different instead of inletting. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the Ranger stock and the, and the Wolverine stock. This is Wolverine? That's all right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sure. Completely different. Yeah. We've uh, put a residual indexing pin. So the striker valve, when you fire the gun, there's an air pressure wave that goes up the striker valve. Uh -huh. so the air doesn't go up the striker valve, but this pressure wave goes up. And this drives this pin up. But the pin only moves up when you fire the gun. And that just flicks that. That's right. So what happens, let's have an empty one for a second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, so what happens is when you put the gun, so that would load the first pellet. Yeah. Okay. So when I fire the rifle, the pin will come up and it will knock it off the trip. But it, what it won't do is rotate the magazine because the bolt has got, a, it's held by the bolt. Ah, oh, yeah. So it just allows it to move to one side. Yeah. So when you open the bolt, that's when it, that's when it moves round. Yeah. But if you don't fire the gun, it, you, won't, it won't come off the lock. So you pull that back again. And so does, I can do that as many times as I because want. Because this, this that does not use this, because this indexer, that's going to pull it every single every time. Every single time. Yeah. But this way, I can do that 20 times. Okay. But when I fire the gun, if you watch that magazine now, yep. you saw it move. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I, I need to see it again. Okay, well, I'll do it again. I'll do <laughs> right. this time fire a pellet in the All back. Right. We're live so look, here. Okay. So there we go. So now we've got a pellet in the chamber. Yeah. Yeah, it moved off the lock. You didn't see that, did you? No, I did see it. <laughs> what I'm surprised is that it works because... <laughs> well, because, me too. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're using... I mean, this is a standard. That's right, yes. So you were, you, were, you were forced to use... Well, not forced to, but you chose to use your current magazine. Yeah, the current magazine... That which was designed, designed for this. No, it was designed for this oh, three years ago. Oh, it was? Three years ago, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we knew it was coming, it just All wasn't right. ready yet. But, uh, so when you, when you open the bolt, of course, it'll rotate round. Yeah. Load the next pellet. So I've got a pellet in there. Yep. I can do that as many times as I want. Yeah. I can open the bolt and it won't fire. Yeah. But when I close the bolt and lock it, it fires and it allows the magazine to come off its. Lock. Oh, so it's yeah, it's. Well, if I can, I don't know if I can re recreate it, but yeah. it's it's this. Now there's spring. That's there's, right. There's, so the, as so soon as the bolt gets out of the way, yeah. it'll go so, the rest of the way. So you push it. Yeah, and now now there's a little bit of spring tension on that, That's and right. then as soon as the bolt, it does that. That's right. Got it. Got it. So that's how it works. And but that, I mean, it's so dang fast too. It, you can't. It, is, it isn't like it sits there and holds it on spring tension for a long time. It just is a guarantee that it doesn't go forward until it's ready. That's exactly right. Okay. Uh, well, obviously, we one of the reasons that the bolt handle open is really designed for the American market because the American market is so used to full bore rifles where you show clear. Yeah. You've got the bolt open. Of course, on an air gun. Yeah, that's it can be actually quite dangerous. Yeah, yeah. So um, we've designed it so it's safe when it's open on the bolt. But the other reason for that is if you put your hand over that indexing pin uh -huh. and fire it, oh, yeah. you've got a hole in your hand. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. you put a bolt in the way. Oh, <laughs> right. So it can't fire like this. So you can't put a hole in your hand that's exactly unless you have a really, really small finger that you can slip in between the bolt and that firing that's pin. That's the one. Okay. How big your hand? I think I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, so yeah, that's, I, I'm the, completely different, for sure, different. yeah. One final detail on the indexing pin is we are able to gear the, the size of the hole to stop working at certain pressures. So once it gets below the usable working pressure of the gun, the indexing pin stops coming up. Okay. So at that point, it, you, because one of the other things you can do is continue to shoot the gun. Because it's all based on the, on the pressure. That's, that's right. It, yeah. So yeah. That once it gets below 100 bar, in this case, on the 12 foot pound one, the indexing pin stops working. Okay. So it forces you to go and fill the gun up yeah. before you end up with a pellet load of uh, I mean, pellets. I mean, yeah, if you're not paying attention, it's kind of your own little... That's right. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is... This is, I mean, with, just by raising this up, a tiny bit so now this came up a tiny bit so now you don't have to have that cut out there anymore for the bottle that's is there right. going to be no cut out on the 500 one too is this the that's same right. diameter it's the same everything's the same just okay. longer it's just a longer one inch and a half longer any i you know anything on the horizon can this be my question is can this be can this technology be i meant that it, the bulk of it is but the airwolf's going to stay with this kind of technology that's right right yes. everything will eventually become wolverine based 
So as we move forward, this will be the engine which will take us forward. Obviously, we're just launching as Wolverine now, and we've okay. got lots of other fantastic rifles, new Regal. But as we move forward, this is the chassis that we'll be taking forward with us. It's a new engine. For well, all? Uh, probably, across, I mean, I think the Regal's got many, many years ahead of it. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but uh, gradually, we'll, we'll start to phase this technology in because it's, it's so neat. Yeah. Um, it's early days yet. We've got a lot of work to do as we move forward. But you can see the flexibility of the design allows us to do different things with this gun. It's just looking at it, to me, looking at it, looks way more robust. And just yeah. just to clean, like it, can, it can like this can take a shot. Not that you want to give your day state a shot, right? But this is just that's a big part of it. I mean, yeah. if, you look, if you look at the length that our barrel sits in here, that's uh, best part two inches, and uh, oh yeah, that's already solidly mounted compared to some. I mean, yeah. if you look at something like the Logan Solo, I know they're not made anymore, but the barrel was in maybe three quarters of an inch. Yeah, um, and we know that you need a, a solid foundation for a barrel. That's co common knowledge. Yeah. So now we're running on a three inch solid. Ergol base, yeah. and it's clamped in, and there's close tolerances. That is not going to move in that base, and there's no transfer port to put into the bottom because it's all one piece. Mm -hmm. So we've got all that uh, in a solid state. And I think you're right. I think it's the idea is to make it more robust. Yeah. Um, so I mean, this this was the Wolverine technology for the 303, right? That's right. And that's why, because you guys needed to have a much stronger chassis to be pushing that air, because. Yeah, so you were having issues with... When you turn yeah, the air range yeah. up to 100 foot-pounds, and you can, yeah. uh, things start to want to come apart. Take a hit, yeah. Right. yeah. So um, they, they do it, but they do it for, for that long. So we turn, we detune the air range to 80 foot-pounds where it was comfortable. But obviously this gun in 303 is straight at 100 foot-pounds. Uh -huh. So it's, it's able to take that sort of power. So if you use this chassis for the Wolf, down the line? Yes. You're gonna have to do. do you have yeah, if in the event that you do, you're gonna have to redo your electronics then and whatnot to make it fit all properly That's in the right, stock. Yes. Okay. But then we would. Because okay. Because we're getting to it's ten, <laughs> right. ten but then years we would. Started. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, okay. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. 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 Actually, the, the current electronics do fit this. Well they, they do. Designed to take it. But so they, um, they uh, I can't even remember how my how the wolf because I, I have it. in there. Perhaps in that screw there. Oh, yeah, um, right. So, because the alignment's close. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we wouldn't, because we've gone, it's been 10 years since we've been doing this kind of electronics and we want to move forward. Nothing wrong with a Wolf, it's a fantastic rifle. Yeah. But obviously, if, we, if and when we come to do an electronic version, this will use it in a different system. system. Right. So, don't go holding your breath on no, the new Wolf. Be a while if yet. you want a Wolf now, get a Wolf. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we need to sort out some plasma gun firing technology. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Uh, Shoot it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to work in the gun gear. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess it does its job. You got anything out there at 80 yards? <laughs> yeah, go for something. Go for something in a tree at sixty. Maybe a squirrel will come it's down. It's a bit easier, yeah. Of course, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, layman, but uh, I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, there was one more. Is that? Oh, that one's tricky. That's that's. See that the thirty yarder there? Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah. when you sit down, you can't see it. Yeah. Oh, you have to do a standing tip. Oh man, it all falls apart then, Tony. <laughs> Here comes the misses. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we can edit that. <laughs> What's that? We can edit that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so the questions. When's it available in the states? Well, uh, the production starts in October, and we'll be shipping the first one to UK gun shops in November. So I imagine early December will be the first shipments to the US. In time for Christmas? Just in time for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> you know how it works. And uh, it, won't, it won't be, obviously, there'll be the FAC versions coming in. Of course, in. yes. A 40 foot pound 2.2 yeah. is certainly the straight away from this, because we've got the large air capacity from the 500 cc bottle. Okay. And the, the 177, when you're talking FAC, what about foot pounds is that one going to be? Well, usually with the 177, we restrict it to 18 foot pounds because yeah. it keeps the velocity. Yeah, where it should in, be in check. Yeah. And these 40 foot pounds on the 2.2? It's a 900, 950 feet per second. So it's, it's in the proper 
the proper velocity. That's right. And I heard yeah. whispers of 2.0 and 2.5. Yeah, they're coming in the new year. Uh, okay. It's a different barrel to the standard rifle, so we can't just put on the 2.0 and 2.5s we've got. So we've got to order those in. All right. Um, but we're starting with a 177 and the 22 um, to get us going with it. And. Uh, who did this fancy stuff? It's quite neat, isn't it? Yeah. I, was I was involved, but I use a proper Stuart Dodd. Yeah. Hi, Stuart. Oh. <laughs> He's our graphic artist and he did the design work on this. And then Minnelli, um, Roberto Minnelli, put it into reality to give us some, some effect. I quite like it. Yeah, I do yeah. too. Yeah. I'm really not one for that kind of stuff usually, but, yeah. but this is, I don't know, kind of classy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, nice gun, Tony. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>